Twist of Fate also something we've seen a little bit of down in the bottom lane, and a lot of that off the back of many, many, many AD carry bans. I do wonder <laughs> if the Zeri will be banned here. It's not something that Jackie Love has lent to massively. He's got one game so far this split on the Zeri. Ezreal also an option, like for example, the, the Karma. You expect that to go mid lane for Cream wow. realistically, but you got we the have seen Karma Ezreal a little like, bit. Oh, true, the yeah. The being looked at is like, wow. Well. <laughs> I'm completely blind. Like, oh, you know what, how long, not very how long am I going to let him do this? <laughs> Kaiser. It's Kaiser is the answer with all this. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Yeah, actually, the Kaiser on the table, too. And um, I think maybe with the Smolder being banned away, uh, TT were like, well, we don't want to play the Kaiser ourselves. On one extent, um, this is Fellows Hover. I wouldn't be surprised if that's locked in. He is a huge player of the Fellows, and as we said, in one of his, he was his second series in the LPL. Played against the top esports and took a game off of um, Jackie Love by using this pick in the late game. Could try and do that again. Uh, the thing about one extent, his stats on his champion aren't very good because typically it's just him 1v9ing in a lot of those games trying to make the big plays. And in this year as well, it kind of has been not a 1v9. I think it's been more like the 2v8 at points. And Gwanex and Ukel, the dual carries of TT, them really trying to pull their weight. And the Aphalos is locked in. It is looking like, once again, two central carries with a supporting cast to allow Ukel and Wanexen to be Atlas and hold the world, hold the world up. God, lock it in, Jackie. This is the absolute quintessential. Yes, Jackie let's go. Jackie loves Draven, locked in alongside Mako's Nautilus. This is a power lane in the bottom side. It's a power lane up top as well with Rumble against Renekton. Honestly, I feel like Cream and Tien, they can go wherever they like if they want to try and dive. They've, they've got options on both sides of the map. I think that they are absolutely happy to allow 369 to brutalize the top lane matchup in the way that he's so consistently done in 2024. And Jack Love, he used to be that Draven uh, one-trick streamer before he even went into pro. Then, of course, he brought it into pro. Very famously beat T uh, T1 at the, the 2019 MSI was under 20 minutes with this pick. It is a legendary pick for the Marksman in the bot lane. 1XN might have taken a game off of him last year, but uh, there is no messing around from Jackie Love and Mako in this series today. This is Draven Nautilus kill lane supreme. Yeah, he's uh, Jackie Love's Draven, 31 games, 21 wins, <laughs> 67% win rate on the pick. He's an absolute monster. Let's see how he's going to go in this one. Make her having a Nautilus as well. I feel like so often you see Draven's not really set up in the draft. I feel like this draft is so good to play Draven in, honestly. Yeah, and I feel like when you've got so much upfront burst damage uh, Draven, if you can kind of bob and weave and get away from the Renata ultimate, it really feels like he can do a lot of damage to uh, melee champions on the top side of the map and that Renekton of Jaeger needs to be so, so careful. If you get chewed up by those axes, you are not lasting long in this game. What that means is it's going to come down to skirmish and team fight execution, and I love that when we have two teams on the line, a TT with so much stakes available to them. Let's see if they can find it. I was a little bit worried there. We weren't going to get a TT job. Bit of a delay. A moment, <laughs> but we got it in the end. Uh, Cream, importantly, getting the last hit on the ward there. Mako sweeping it. That does mean the Cream can hit level two off of that first wave. So potential advantage there in the mid lane. Uh, Hoya, going to be a little cautious. Tien gives chase in the end. Uh, or, sorry, stops giving chase, I suppose. Um, so nothing too crazy in the level one, aside from Cream grabbing that ward and having a minor XP advantage. Looking through at the wards, see if any, uh, not the wards, the runes, see if there was anything um, out of order there, but it seems like we've largely got ourselves on the um, pretty regular stuff. There is the airy for Yukal, sometimes you'll see the comet out of it, but against the karma, because you can shield your way out of that rune, it can help you get more laning phase presence with that one. It's uh, not great value if you dodge out of that one. Hook, level uh, this one. is Dangerous. not a good start to the lane. Jackie Love just getting some free hits onto Chocho. <laughs> Uh, that's a potential all-in for later on into the lane. One thing I will say, Aphelios very good at fighting for level one prio. I don't know if he's good enough to take on the Draven Nautilus threat. Oh, hook hits onto a minion, so 
That oh. should push away Jack 11 Maker. It's funny you mention that. I've always felt like Aphalos just isn't a champion until level 2, and that's why he's often paired up with champions that can allow him to play towards that level 2. It means that if they don't get it right now, they're going to be really, really um, in a lot of trouble if they give up that level 2, but I think the Renata standing on the wave just about gets it to them. And congratulations to Mako. 900 LPL games. What a milestone to reach. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? It's first ever game in January 2015. My goodness, that's a long time ago now, isn't it? That's almost yeah. a decade ago that Mako came into the LPL. Just think about that for a second. That is just mind-blowing. I was barely above 20 <laughs> when Mako entered the LPL. That's like a long time ago. I've just realized I've aged myself to a lot of viewers there probably, but oh well, is what it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's take a look at the jungle pathing a little bit. Aged it's... like a fine cream or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm turning into cheese at this point. Um, both junglers pathing towards the bottom side as another hook hits this time onto one xn Ignite is there. We can... Oh, great handshake, but the cleanse comes through. Chocho's low. This is going to be a flash angle for Jackalove. He wants himself first blood on the Draven, and he cashes it in. Another oh, so close! Make it the double. Jackalove is here, and his Draven is just as godly as ever. No free rides in this bot lane. You must be this tall to ride the bot lane roller coaster. And 1XN and Chocho do not meet that bar. The level one sets things up so well. Chocho had already run through all of his pots and oh. so much. And now Ignite in the top side. Not going to lead through to a kill from 369. But we, this is a 2v2 double kill without junglers even getting involved. That's a huge shift. So much we talk about bot lane being a 3v3, particularly with Shin Sao and Viego being in the game. We get ourselves a uh, up close and personal view of how Chagulov does this. Um, he walks forward, throws axes, keeps catching the axes, he uses the cleanse to keep going forwards again. He's just got so much value going forwards. Time and time again, gets the lethal tempo up. So much attack speed early on, he just about manages to outplay towards that last auto as well. That triumph and level up coming in clutch. Yeah. The, uh, oh, no the health potion. Potion, but the health. <laughs> the, the, ho the health potion taking that entire time as well, surviving on barely any HP, and a Sheen picked up as well as two Log Swords. Oh my lord, this lane is not getting any easier for one except a Chocho. All four summoner spells burnt on their side. And while that's true for top esports too, Hex Flash is available for Mako. So now, sheer yeah. respect has to come through from the TT bot lane. And I mean, Beige one, he's got two options here. Try and go down there and bail them out, or just abandon ship and play for the top side. It's so hard because um, once you start losing the Calibrum on the Aphelios 2, it's very hard to reach the CS beyond that point. 369 uh, sees that though his jungle attention topside, but he's sticking around for the XP. The wave will slow push back to him anyway. He's completely safe in his top lane. And you're absolutely right that Beitron has now a very difficult decision because there is a very big chance that Mako just hits another hook and another kill goes through. And that's going to make things even worse because Yukal's not on a roaming champion. He can't roam down there on the Talir or the Ari or something like that. He's used his teleport back into lane as well, so there's going to be a few minutes where that's going to be um, on cooldown. Jack 11 and Mako have completely ruined the bot side of the map, and there's a dive in coming. Yes, there is. Cream's moved down. Tien is already here, no summoners as Mako just walks under, gets himself that route, gets the hook as well, might even sacrifice himself for these kills, but it does not matter. Another kill as well for Jackie Love, and this is going from bad to worse as Yukal arrives, and I think Top Esports are quite happy to just go for a redive on this one, and it's another one into the pocket of Top Esports as Cream grabs the kill this time around, 5-1 to one on the scoreboard, and a 2 thousand gold lead already oh it's like lambs to the slaughter lemmings jumping over the edge as they go one by one into top esports on the bot side that's an essence reaver at six minutes for jackie love oh my god this is just about to get even worse this is such an important game for tt reminder if they win this series they get themselves truly into the playoffs race we knew it would be an uphill battle but they're not making it any easier for themselves they can leave themselves completely exposed on the bot side, Yukal then just goes under turret, and he's trapped under turret beyond that point. It's a massive misunderstanding of what he can do here. Shin Sao's regular cooldowns are back up, charges up the Q on the minion waves, so it's an instant knockup into the instant combo. Easy as you like. Massive misplay from Yukal and crew. And unfortunately, Top Esports is not a team that gives you second chances. Oh no, Ow. Chocho gets caught by the standard side. Beitron's here, maybe a chance as he looks for a resale to Jackie Love, but look at how much damage Jackie Love does. It's a 2v3, 
One X Ten goes in. He's only level four though. He doesn't have the damage to finish Jackie Love. One for one. But Jackie Love's still going here. He's just hit level six. The ultimate's available. Chocho has to dodge this. The whirling death. He's not going to throw uh, it. Is he going to throw it? Let's see, he's trying to wait out. I think he's throwing it right now. Maybe things look next time you come back into lane, it won't make a difference if. Uh, well, he might have been able to get that kill. Maybe he just wants to save it for the next fight. He is so strong. Two levels up, as you already said. That first item is six minutes into the game. The thing is, with him being so strong, he can take extra turret plates like this. He gets the back, and you know, TT, I mean, they get one back, especially against that lead. That's that's something, I suppose. But the fact that Jack Love is just now effectively a fountain laser already. There's a death going to be on strain here as well. as that like base runs caught out. Good cleanse there, but Beach one, yeah, found, taken down. The bailout doesn't save him, and Tien walks away with his life. As Chocho will die to Mako, who's chasing him. No, doesn't go down, and in fact, Tien falls. 369 here to punish Hoya for the audacity of trading a kill. Top eSports, they just don't let oh. go. They, oh, oh there's the ult we were talking about. Then. Shakula uh, sees the level four at Chocho and says, all right, let's have a pot shot at that one. Um, Really feels like right now, top esports are is something that you've talked about a lot. I guess in TT's history as well, uh, not TT's top esports history. Um, people have called this team an early aggressive team, and that's not always the way to characterize them. It's just that once you give up the first play, the game then explodes, and it feels like yeah. that's happened very early in this game. And then the problem is they don't let go. They certainly do not. This is the fastest team in the lead, uh, in the league. Sorry and they still have a 100% win rate when they're ahead at the 15 minute mark. And I think at this, well, they're three and a half thousand gold ahead at eight and a half minutes. Felt like the odds of them falling behind by 15 minutes are pretty slim at this stage. Uh, they also have the highest Baron percentage in the game. And historically top esports team that love to play around Baron, Famously a team that love to throw around <laughs> Barons yes. uh, and flip quite a lot of Barons, but it does feel like they have been very, very yeah. uh, consistent with their Baron play across the course of this year. It does feel like a much more regimented version of top esports, but when you give them picks like Draven, when you give them this ability to just bully in lane, they will absolutely take that chance. And the fact that 369 rejoining the roster and being such a force in the top lane as well, you know, roaming down to that plane to the top, like, top jungle as well, so willing to follow his team into the fire and light a couple of those fires himself, has once again changed this team. 369 been on magnificent form so far. But yes, they did drop a couple of series to the rivals, but they are still looking great. Bear Trump, again, just trying to stabilize this lane down bot side and not yeah. exactly working that easily for them. It's so funny, oh, Jackie no. <laughs> Okay, Patreon gets out. Jacket of already one shots cast of minions, like <laughs> he's at level seven and he one shots the back line of minions. It's just such a difficult position to play from for TT. Uh, three grubs will be taken here by top esports in the top side using that prio with the 369 grabbing. Uh, I think Cream able to get prior off the back of a reset as well in the mid lane. Also, the fact that he's got two kills. Uh, and two assists to his name. It's not just the Draven that's ahead. Like, they're ahead in literally all three lanes. And this, like, when you're playing a Viego, man, what do you do, do you kill? When you're, yeah, when your team is this far behind in every lane, you just have no avenue into the game. Yeah, and normally you'd be like, oh, we can at least have enough gold to get one fight. It's 10 minutes in, and you're already falling out of this game. Cream is likely going to solo kill you, Cal. Maybe flash for flash after this point. He's got another flash queue. Not to be the case just here. Danger mark, though. Once again, Yukal, as you were saying, even he's falling behind to Cream. He's picked up some early gold. He'll get himself a malignance, and that's going to get much worse from this point. And, yeah, I mean, even if you go towards a first target, you have the Karma Shields on top of them. And you've got huge amounts of disruption available from Tien and Mako. People start um, disrupting using and going to engage as well. I've talked at length about how Viego has been used by teams that have been struggling to play more difficult compositions to just say, look, we get that first kill. This is now a very difficult composition to play. This has not ended up patching things over Mako and maybe angling for a hook, and he missed just about. So close. Look at the CS lead in the bottom lane. All the stun oh, side no. hits. <laughs> the flash. Not going to be used by 1XN. I wasn't sure. I mean, I suppose Jackalove's not really stacked up that much because every time he gets a couple of stacks, he cashes it in immediately. So the ult execute, not doing that much just yet. Oh, Mako's found him. Another hook lands. TN. Can he follow up onto this one? I don't think so. The hostile takeover will deny the engage. But tower. Yeah, they're that's so forced away. So many minions denied. Great equalizer in the top side gives 369 the all-in chance, and Hoyas just gonna be solo killed. 
What a style game from Top Esports. It's gonna be a return kill. I don't think he survives even with the flash. We'll see. Yukal's up here. Old Thin. I think we'll be saying goodbye to the Rumble. Oh, the route still lands, unfortunate. I think he was trying to get out of the circle with the flash, but yeah. I think he'd already stepped into the circle. It does follow you at that point, so unfortunate for 369. But, I mean, how much of a style game is this? You do have three grubs of Tisa TT. You can at least get a plate back, but it is paling in comparison to the gold. Um, of the first turret of the game being put onto Jackie Love, and if it wasn't bad already, um, you've now got almost a second item at 13 minutes into the game. You're meant to be getting this at like, I don't know, 17, 18 minutes. You're going to get your first item like now. Um, he's very far ahead, and he has that first turret on top of it. There's a rewards dropped in the enemy jungle as well. It's very, very hard to catch Top Esports okay. off guard. They might be able to get Jackie Love as he's over pushed this top lane. He's currently alone. I don't yeah. think Yukel wins a 1v1, though, is the problem. He's Even with fight. a level lead, yeah. He's not winning that 1v1. And you can see that uh, Beach one and Chocho are trying to move up. Okay, Yukel sees that he's running out of time in this play, and someone will check the brush, so throws out a couple of abilities and flashes himself to safety. Well played by Yukal just to get out, but I think the problem was Mako and Tien moved into the jungle to get vision, so the initial play of Chocho and Beichuan coming up to make this play on Jackie just doesn't work. Top Esports going to cancel some backs. Yes, they can. Yukal alone on the turret. Well, Top Esports, young, again, they did this at 13 minutes into the game. You're meant to be doing this so much later. Top Esports accelerated the game so much, forcing TT off of their own jungle caps. Oh, knock up onto one XN. He does flash himself to safety here. TT in full retreat, spiraling despair onto Mako. It's not going to be enough to finish a kill here as TN continues on to Hoya. Oh, that's a hook. How did he hit that through the wall? Janky hook coming on through. In goes Renekton. and Jackie Love low on HP, but still surviving. Hostile takeover through the entire team. And TT have done it. They found an angle 5v4 and punished top esports. The problem with Jackal of being fed is that, well, um, if you use the hostile takeover, one axe will also one-shot his team. The cleanse comes out of, uh, from Hoya, and it means that the hostile takeover means that there's a couple of those spinning axes hitting top esports instead. That's the plan all along, get the Draven fed, so once you get that cleanse away, <laughs> maybe he could be the team fight victory. It's a slim one at that, but it's something on the board. It's, again, realistically not going to be enough. Harold is going to help TT maybe get a power play somewhere, but you're losing a bot lane in a turret for it. You don't get the shutdown on the Draven all the same, so you don't get the big victory there. Top Esports, even though they lose some kills, probably still happy with how the map is being played after this. And again, just look at how um, how far they're pushing in at this point of the game. This is not the time mark you do this. You normally do this around, you know, Baron's spawn. The Dragon's coming in later. They're level 6 on supports. This is very early in the game to be going for full 5v5s and enemy side of jungle. Well, that's not even a 5v5, it's a 4v5, so the rumble's not here. Hoya does get an angle, but can't quite get the one shot, but importantly forces the cleanse. And then the cleanse comes through, and then, um, bop. <laughs> yeah, luckily, uh, for Jackie Love, he dropped his axes. It's not often that you say that, but if he's got axes there, I'm pretty sure he just one-taps Baker as well. Doesn't get it. It's going to be a Drake of Peace now. It's, uh, what, 6? Almost 7,000 gold lead in 15 minutes. And uh, TT, a little reprieve there. They lost a Tier 2 in the bottom lane for it. They didn't quite get the shutdown from Jackal uh, either. The fact that Jackal survives is pretty brutal. Did you, um, did you know happen to glance at the, at the gold difference they came up on the bottom half of the screen there? I think it's I just not. about a 5,000 gold lead to Jackal individually just under good lord <laughs> i have never seen that kind of lead at this point in the game he has himself two and a half items and what i said again, this ad carry is no slouch and he's on one of his comfort picks but this is just the power of jack love going for another fight says the equalizer and out though they're looking to disengage and jack love is within range to respond to a fight and that typically means tt don't want to take that fight also jack love having that ultimate available he can influence the fight even without showing up and he's got a collector now as well as a bf sword and i don't know when the last kill he got was i'm not sure if he got a kill in that previous fight or not uh but potentially uh, okay 74 stacks he did get a kill in the previous fight so his execute not that crazy one xn barely gets away from that hook a pixel in it there nice try from mako as another tower will just be Whittled away. I say whittled away. Chunked down, I suppose, is a better term. Jackie Love dodges away from the hostile takeover this time, and that means he can be as aggressive as he likes. He doesn't have the flash right now. Oh, God. 
Oh, so much damage. Of course, he's now got another item, uh, which gives him um, an execute. So he's, so he's got the execute on his ult, depending on the amount of stacks he has, but he also has it on the collector. That makes things very, very dangerous if it wasn't already before. He's also got um, you know, the ability to kind of pin people into the fight. I feel like um, the Equalizer right now, it's, it's actually less useful as like a team fight DPS tool of pinning people onto it. It's actually just better to just slow people down so Jackalove can auto attack more. I think at this point, 369, he's going to be that team fight facilitator whilst also doing big damage. So TT, um, with two immobile backline carries, if they get tagged by that Equalizer, I think the fight is over. I think that slow is actually enough for TT to just be blown away. So what you're saying is, Rhyolai's second item for 369. I'm right there with you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's almost a 6,000 gold lead now for Jackie. Look, it's not bad, is it? Let's see what he picks up on the recall. No an Infinity way. Edge. Oh, good lord. He's I got have an never Infinity seen this. Edge. He's on three items at 17, almost 18 minutes into the game. My lord. This, this is. He's, he's mean, gone into practice tool and hit the gold button. He's just given yeah. himself a free 10k gold. It's like that. I've, I've never in all my days have I seen such an individual lead and such an early, expensive three items. Sometimes you get with cheap ones, but 80 minutes, just, this is absolutely absurd. Do you want to know the funniest bit about it all? Not yeah. a single ninja tabby on the side of TT. Nobody has any armor. Oh, here it comes. And here we go. He's not even needed for the kill onto Batron. There we go. Hoya just gets absolutely annihilated. There's two for Jackie. Looking for number three here as Cream finds himself in the route. One auto will do the trick. No, Tien takes it. Wasn't sure if he was going to keep stacking the multi kill. I mean, at this point, they're just flexing on him. They're just absolutely flexing on him. Here we go. One XN grabs himself the Graviton route. Burned to death by the equalizer forced to flash in the oh. 2v1 is what extend flush it away. How do you fight against this gold here. lead? This is this is the right play to make, but they're just so far behind. It is not fair. Oh, Cream's taken down. Didn't expect Yukal to still be sticking around. Didn't see the control ward in the brush. Nice play by Yukal. An important pickup for TT. I just don't know if it's really gonna be enough. Right, so they're going to go towards Baron. Oh, no, they're so far ahead that the Baron's not alive. That does occasionally happen. Top these forces again. They have Flash on Jackie Love now. Um, that makes it much easier for him to follow up and make the game-winning play. Well, I mean, the game-winning plays have already happened, but the game-sealing plays after this point. Show, show. Um, oh. Mako! <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't all be winners. Chocho, good ultimate. Mako actually buffers that with the Q onto Beige one, uh, who jumps into the Herald. I don't know how fast they can kill the Herald. No, oh, okay. I wasn't sure if they just like one shot the Herald and find the pick off of it. Here we go, Baytron. Riding around, going towards the mid lane here. Just about gets past that Deja corner. Vu, I've been... I just yeah. want to see this dude, the initial D soundtrack at that point. That's some of the better driving. It does nothing, but it's fun. Yeah, unfortunately, it also uses up the charge. So now the Herald yeah. will absolutely just die. Unfortunate. Okay, what are we gonna look at here? Yeah, okay, the, the bush camping topside. The problem is, this is a jungle and a support. They don't do damage. They teleport in with a little bit of damage, and it's late. Someone's already dead. The jungle's already gone. You don't have your resets available at that point. And then, um, this is just another meal for Jackie Love, who is absolutely monstering this game. This is one of the most individually dominant AD carry performances I've seen in a very long time. He is. Again, this dude has just <laughs> stepped into practice tool, clicked gold a couple of times, and he's just walked away with a whole couple of bags of cash. Um, the only thing which TT are happy about is that he's not on a champion that can just jump forward all the time because he's a lower mobility carry than some. But even that, that's such a yeah. low consolation prize. <laughs> Luckily for him, he's got a Nautilus, so it doesn't yeah. really matter too much. And on top of that, he's about to grab a rapid fire cannon, so yeah. uh, he'll still be able to hit you from a million miles away. And one of those axes is going to be half of your HP at this point. Mako spots him coming in. Beige one maybe could find a 50-50 smite if top esports uh, play it a little fast and loose. I wouldn't put it past them with this kind of lead. They do tend to enjoy their games when they're ahead. Oh, Big man. On to one extent. See you later, Aphelios. Bailar can't save you now. Okay, maybe a pick, though. Tien goes down. One for one. Hoya on a flank as well as Mako falls. This could be huge. Jackie Love is found as well. Hoya gets onto the back line it's and the a triple flip. comes on through for Beach One. They find the chance and get onto the Baron. Oh, well, we thought we'd done away with the top esports Baron flip, but this is the power of Viego and the Renata. Delay until you get that first kill and then use your enemy stats against them. We're going straight into a replay to show that again in all its horrible glory. 
Mako flashes the moonshot from the Aphelios to avoid some damage. He still manages to get into the bailout and use that Infernum to get Tien low. The turnaround damage from 1x set is what sets this up, and then Beitron slams home the home run. The double reset here, very important, gets him enough regen to the point where he doesn't die. If he ends up dying there, maybe they can't take the Baron afterwards. He then takes the Draven's body, uses that to burn down the Baron even quicker. 1xn absolutely winning the play there fantastic damage coming out from him and it means that a small reprieve comes through for tt i mean kills wise are actually fairly even they're still about five thousand gold down which <laughs> it doesn't yeah. sound like that much in the context of this game five thousand gold in 22 but it's still a monstrous lead but the hey thing is, now it's a, like it's a reprieve. You know, they're down five towers right six to one um but they're already up, you know, they're, they're within touching distance of the gold, considering where they were. If they can get onto a couple of these objectives, maybe they can get some big gold in pocket back. They're looking for a CC chain, maybe finishing off Mako. Spiraling Despair should finish this one, it's a pick. Great stuff coming out from TT here. Another opportunity. Surely top esports. This is not the way the your 100% record goes! A pick on Jackie Love as well, that's a second back-to-back -back shutdown. And, and they could use the Draven's body to push towers quicker as well with his extra AD. TT in such an important series for them. They are looking to get themselves into playoffs. If they could make it through a comeback like this, it would be a miracle to get themselves into the race. What is in the water this morning, Cream? Trying to chase down for more. Sien is here too. 369 doesn't have his ultimate. Still does a lot of damage. Okay, I don't think they can chase for more. But my goodness, first, our first series of the day going the way of RNG over FBX now after Top Esports get a 10,000 gold lead a team with a 100% win rate when they're ahead their biggest lead of the split of being ahead and yet here we are with TT fighting back Jackulov still ungodly strong but if he doesn't have flash how does he survive some of these fights I think that we can see now that if TT can reach him he dies he doesn't have a Renata to help him bail out doesn't mean that Top Beasts don't have a stat advantage. Baron Buff is just about to fall off in about 30 seconds as well, so there'll be some of the map advantage down for TT. Do they really feel bold enough to go fight around the Dragon? I think that's it. Top Esports have managed to get themselves good vision control. Jackula still farming up in this mid lane so far. I think another thing to talk about as well is that one of the big problems playing against this Viego is that Top Esports team has a lot of very good basic abilities. If the Nautilus dies, the Shin Sao dies, even the Karma as well, just the resets and then the one round of regular abilities. Very, very powerful if Beitron can unlock it. Certainly can be. We have a, a moment of, of stillness, of quiet here in a game that has had a, it's more than a kill a minute so far in this one. It's been action-packed. But TT, I love that we are seeing them fight back. I'm so glad that they have not just rolled over. They managed to find these picks. They managed to find their angles. And a couple of them, in fact, I think pretty much every angle so far has been off punishing Mako. Like Mako trying to go for the hook onto Hoya, got it behind the wall and then head over extended so they punish of these other fights as well. Mako being the target that's being picked off here. So, Dragon spawning now. Top East was chosen not to stand on their vision of bot side jungle. They stole top side blue buff instead and now fighting towards mid lane prior. This is again going to be about that first pick. Beitron takes a little tap. Is there a oh, hook? No, this time it's not Top Esports being picked, and that means the TT are being destroyed. Oh, Mako low on HP gets over towards the wall, but Page One gets away from the root last possible second. That one XN goes for the 1v1 on Jackie Love, but if you step up to the king, you better not miss. Taken down and Top Esports, they'll blow this game wide open once again. Another hook from Mako as Chocho has nowhere to go. One last little harpoon to finish it and 369 the first number of his name matches the kills in the fight it's 18 to 13 as top esports walk this one to the base oh the hero juice runs out thunder talk gaming this is such an important series for them they need at least a series win to keep themselves in the playoffs race likely even more than that let's be honest they have themselves a hard schedule not going to be the game right now, but that could have been such a big moment. They just about miss out on a couple of key different resets. 
Poya dies very, very quickly at the start of this. Chocho doesn't get the hostile takeover right here. I think that would have been such a big difference for them. It comes in a little bit late, even though you can see that Mako does end up being flashed away from. Beitron can't quite get the reset on him. I think Cream does a really good job alongside Tian from blocking him out. And then one XN almost, almost gets himself a crucial pick here. I think if Mako stands a bit close to Jaculum, yeah. there's a chance that the actual splash damage kills him as well from the multi-man inferno not quite there the hero play fails nice try for one xn i think you're absolutely right i think if if mako's next to him i think that's a kill one xn the inferno really has been the name of the game for tt so yeah. far the previous play where he managed to get everyone so low for page one's resets i love this aggressive Ophelios. he's not playing as the you know kite back carry that you want people to come to you he's going aggressive he's going in with the inferno yeah. And trying to just one shot. And this is it. This is exactly how he made his way into LPL from his LDL team as well. We knew that this champion was powerful in his trainee days. He was found away from so much. It was his 1v1, 1v9 champion. It hasn't been a 1v9 performance so far. He's had to really be working with his team. Now, Mako, no flash for the next fight. We'll see if he can once again be picked off as this Nautilus by TT. That could be the go button. Beitron hanging around the side once again. A couple of caster minions made it through. They will start to whirl away at that in him. Oh, no, they won't because the Super Minions yeah, just spawned. <laughs> okay, never mind. I don't think the mid prior really is going to achieve much for TT. It's Jackie Love still kiting backwards here. The damage traded back and forth. You can takes a chunk. Mako doesn't quite land that hook. You can't force to flash on that one. Spatron steps nice in run. once again. We're going back and forth on this fight, but these poke, this poke war is not winnable for TT with how much damage Jackie Love's doing. Hostile takeover's wide. Equalizer onto five people, and that redemption crucial. But if they stay in the circle, they might die for it. Mako nearly burnt down himself. Yeah, one extent has the rifle turrets. If you walk over them and you disrespect them, you're gonna die very, very close, even with the awkward team fight setup. To getting a kill back once again, one X sends Aphelios really being the core of that play. Teleport back in from Hoya, but no ultimate from Quay. No flash available on him either. Show show no ult. Big tools burned by top esports. Yeah. Makers like in base. Survived the play. Makers in base right now. The top esports cannot fight this second. And TT, they get mid prio, they can move into the river. This is their chance to regain control. And TT actually standing their ground in this sort of poke war that happened. Now they move over to the Baron. Okay. So, Infernum up for 1XN. He doesn't have the rifle turrets, but he has the big Mega Infernum bomb. Let's look to see if they can do flash. the hero play. Mako punishes the lack of flash, and Yukal is immediately eviscerated. Reset for Beitron, but Jackula focuses him this time. 1XN Infernum does nothing when Jackie loves on Draven, flashing forwards for the Quadra and destroying TT where they stand. He locks in his Draven, and he makes this game his game. There were some hero plays, but Thunder couldn't strike enough. Top Esports walking away with a heartbreaking blow to TT. The thunder was loud, but unfortunately the lightning struck elsewhere. Fantastic game from Top Esports, snowballing the early game like crazy. It nearly got away from them, but that 100% win rate went ahead of 15, stays intact after all. And uh, we'll just pretend it was clean, shall we? We'll pretend that that was an easy one. The early game certainly was, the mid game, not so much. TT, they are going to be kicking themselves after it felt like there were a couple of chances which just flipped against them, given the fact that it was not close for so much of that game. The top East were one of the most dominant games we have seen in the early game for the entire year anywhere. That was the level that we're talking about, and still it almost became a question. Yeah. Such an important series for TT, they can't quite get that miracle comeback. I feel like every single fight as well was down to the hostile takeovers. Like you, when you were looking at Jackie Love, 80% of what he was thinking about in that fight is like, either do I have cleanse or B, can I dodge the hostile takeover? Those were the two key things for Jackie Love. We're going to jump into a break. I'm hoping TT have more of that in the tank and less of the early game in the tank. We'll have to find out in a few.